Hi, Adrian. This is Majestic Rider. So today I'm here with this pretty blue roan rocking horse, and we're going to teach him some arena work. I've ridden him once as well, just like that champagne horse. And this horse knew a lot less than the other horse, so we'll kind of see how it goes today. He, I guess, used to kind of be stuck on go because they rode him really fast. And a lot of gated horses don't know any of this arena work, and most of the time, that's part of the problems that you're having is the horse doesn't understand. You think it does, but is really not understanding the cues because nobody has taught him the cues. So we're going to start him out just the same way I do. I teach every horse the same thing, but I teach it different ways depending on how they learn and how they react to what I'm doing. Just like people, nobody's the same. Nobody really learns the same. And so you just got to figure out what works for that horse and how to get there sooner than later. So we're going to stop and we're going to do our lateral flexion first once we get him to stop. And so we're going to turn his head to the side, get him to get to the bit. Good boy. Now we're going to go to the other side. Now you'll see I'm keeping my rein a little bit shorter with him because he just doesn't really know and I don't want him to go too far forward that I can't catch him. Uh, again, as I do this, I just want their head to go slightly to the side. I don't need it to come back and touch my foot like you might see them do with some other breeds uh, because some of these horses are overly flexible and if you turn them too far, sometimes their hindquarter keeps moving. Now his is moving right now and it's not because he's too flexible, it's just because he doesn't know. So again, this is a very helpful thing to do. I think some people don't like it because they, they can't get their horses going because we're teaching them to stand still and turn their head. But as a trail rider, I think it's important because lots of times we have things break. Now if you watch him, when he goes to the right, he turns pretty easy. When he goes to the left, Sometimes he cocks his head. He did it just the time before, but he didn't do it now. So I checked with the owner last week because I just wanted to make sure nothing was wrong, like he hadn't had his teeth done or anything like that. Now, sometimes they're just harder on one side of their mouth, like, you know, they're not as sensitive or their brain doesn't figure it out as easily as one side as the other. And so once I know they're okay, I just keep working on it. So he did quite good except for the walking away. And But what I'm going to do, and I'll turn and face you, is I'm going to do the left side a couple more because we're trying to make it as even as the right. And since he doesn't do it as well to the left, how would I get it the same as the right? Well, I do it more often. Good boy. Good job. Now he's not supposed to walk off when I say good job. So when he just did, I just picked up the rein and did it again like a one rein stop. So he's got to figure out that he's not supposed to just walk off. A lot of people shorten up their reins and then they just go. And the horse thinks that when you shorten the reins, it means go. So they don't understand they're supposed to wait for their leg. And then they always go forward. You don't see that with a lot of like reining and uh, cow horses and stuff because they teach them leg means go, reins means slow. So... That's what we have to teach our gated horses, is that not pulling on the reins means to go faster. It should mean to slow down. Otherwise, you have no brakes. So that was pretty good. So now we're going to try a little bit of the vertical flexion. So I'm going to turn them to face you. I don't expect this to be great. Again, we've only done it one day. So I am going to pull on my left rein a little first, and then pull on my right rein and hold, and wait till he drops his head down and gives to the bit. Now, he made a try there. He didn't do it, but he made a try. So reward the try, and you'll get them uh, to figure it out much faster. If you miss the try, see how he did that so much faster now? Now he's inching a little forward, and I can't correct everything at the same time. So I'm like, well, let's just go for the vertical flexion, and we'll fix you from walking away after this. So I'm going to do it over and over again, and as much as I can, I'm going to start with my left rein first, and then my right rein, and then hold because I'm trying to make his left side better 
go boy. And so I want to use that left rein a lot and then the right rein. And you'll see he's not tilting his head so much anymore. If something's really wrong with them, it doesn't go away like that. When it does go away, then you go, oh, they just didn't understand. It was a training thing. Now he's pulling, so I'm not giving. Now he's not pulling. So now we're going to walk around and do those one rein stops. So he starts to learn to read my body and understand when I want to go slow. So I'm going to do the same thing if you didn't see the other horse's video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit back, take my legs out, uh, take a deep breath in and out with my mouth because they feel it much better versus when you do it with your nose. And then I am going to pull on the rein and I'll be saying, whoa, so we understand that. So legs off. Whoa. So almost. Okay. Now, third time's a charm. It's windy and, uh, camera keeps flowing over so let's see if that works what I just did squeeze a little let him walk on a loose rein take leg off sit back breathe in and out then reach down Whoa. So if he keeps moving, then I turn his head more. Now he just walked off, so I'm just going to turn him. The hard part, especially when the horse is fast, is dropping your reins again. If you're really afraid to drop the rein, you can just have your hands forward like that. But you want to get the horse so they understand when you let go of the reins, they're not supposed to go. And so sometimes you got to do a thousand of these. See how he just keeps walking off? Because he just doesn't understand. It's not his fault. He goes, do you want to go? I think you want to go. Let's go. I think you want to go. And that's what he has stuck in his brain because nobody has taught him. So he's just got to be able to stand here on a completely loose rein until I squeeze, which is now. I'm going to do it when he's relaxed. Now I'm going to turn just so we're not going right at the camera. So I try to do it within five or ten steps. Whoa. Because if you only do it once around the arena, they space out and they won't get the idea of what they're supposed to do. So do it every five to ten steps. Then once they're better, you can do it every 20 steps. And then you can do it just once in a while. So I teach it a lot the first couple of days. And then after that, I just do it here and there so they don't forget. But most of the time, they then have the idea that they're supposed to listen to me not walk off, and they're just supposed to stay slow if I have a on a loose rein like this. <sighs> Whoa. Now, sometimes when you stop them and they're facing home or facing the gate, they're really motivated to go that way. That just happens. You just got to work with it. So some days are going to be easier than others, okay? So we're going to do one more because I want to end to the left because that's his bad direction. So here we go, a little leg. Sit back, breathe out. Whoa. Turn his head. Good. So you saw the other horse stopped right away because he had more training on it. This guy didn't. So it, this just takes time. But he's getting it. He's understanding. So I think everything's good. And you saw when I turned his head to the left, he's not cocking his head so much to the left anymore. So now we're going to pick up both reins. See how he walks off? So I'm just going to hold. And when he's not pulling or screwing around, I'm going to release. If he walks off, I'm going to pull again. Now, he didn't walk off. I'm always ready to pull. Is he going to go? And I could go back to my one rein stop if I needed to. Nope. He's good. So we're going to squeeze and we're going to walk off. And now we're going to do our circle. So I always start with bending circles because a lot of these horses don't bend. And he's one of them. So what I'm going to do is squeeze and relax on that inside rein and at the same time push with my inside leg. And I'm kind of opening up that right rein a lot because he's falling in a lot, a lot more than that other horse was, okay? And that's not his fault. He just doesn't know under, understand how to bend, okay? It's a very, very important to teach the horses to bend, but a lot of people don't know that, okay? Because then they can go around turns and carry us more balanced. If they don't know how to bend, they just lean in. They can lose their balance much easier. So you're trying to support both sides of their mouth when they really don't know how. You're trying to turn your body and bend with them so it makes it easier for them to balance. And when they do the right thing, like he just did there, you release. So other times I'm holding and helping, now he's good. So give him the self to carry themselves. And then when he starts falling in, which should be about 
here, I'm going to help him again. But he is following where my eyes are looking, and he's a smart horse. He's doing a pretty good job for not knowing what he's doing. So let's go the other way. So we're going to look to the right. Now right rein, right leg, left rein supports and kind of opens up. And I kind of pull my right rein towards my right hip. We grew up and we learned indirect rein and used that a lot, but this usually works better. <laughs> so I'm not doing dressage anymore, so I don't know what they're up to. Uh, but this is what works for me and the gated horses. So see, he's already putting his head down. I'm not even asking him. All I'm doing is working on bending and trying to steer. And when he drops his head, I release, though, because he's trying to do the right thing. He's like, I think this is what you want, right? And I was like, yeah, that would be great. I didn't know you could do both those things at the same time. So it's windy. I have the microphone on, but I know somebody's going to complain they can't hear me. So put your earphones in. And I apologize. This is the best I can do. It's the best microphone I have that I can afford. Um, and people help me pay for it, too. So. All right, so he tripped a little bit there, but again, the footing's bad, and he's probably not been ridden in an arena very much at all. And the arena footing can go up and down, but it all looks the same color, so they don't always know. And sometimes they'll be trippy in arenas in the beginning, okay? And that's why I use those poles. Those help a lot. All right, so I'm going back and forth, and by golly, this is so much better than he was on Friday. He had two days off. I lunged him before I got on him to get some energy off. And he's not bending spectacular, but he couldn't bend at all on Friday. So he slept on it, and he goes, I, I think I understand what she wants now. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go to our serpentine. Make sure your camera's still on. So we're weaving back and forth. So left rein, left leg. Right rein, right leg. And I make it just the size I could do on a fire road. So again, your serpentine helps you to bend your horse. It's another lateral movement, so it helps to separate their legs to warm your horse up. If it was a pacey horse, gets them paying attention. It's a good thing to do if your horse is too fast and you're riding with other horses. You can serpentine back and forth. But you can't teach it out there. you got to teach it somewhere by yourself and then start using it all the time. So again, I do this on the trail a lot. So your one rein and leg is bending them like right rein and leg, and then left rein and leg, and the other side supports. So you're giving them support on both sides of their mouth. Okay. So now we're going to walk, and we're going to start to make our circles. Okay. Now, since the camera's only got so much battery and the wind and the weather, normally I keep this horse slower and walk slower, but I'm going to do his flat walk. So you'll see with him, he's got a much shorter stride than that champagne horse. Uh, he doesn't overreach a lot. And when I work him from the ground and ask him to go faster, he does a flat walk, and then he starts either doing a little saddle gait. Not most of the time, he just goes into a trot. And so with him, when, when I rode him, it didn't feel to me like he would have much of a running walk. So we're just going to do his flat walk here, and we're going for our three circles. So that was one. And then we're going to do a saddle gait, which I know he knows how to do. Yeah. They rode him with his head up and a lot of trotty horses. You have to do that to get them to uh, hold that lateral gait in the beginning. And then over time, we might be able to get their heads down. Some horses you can't. They're just too trotty. Okay? Others, you are able to get their head down, and they can hold it. But they can only do so much so fast. So for the flat walk, we want his head where the top of his head is just fine. He, the way he's built, he's kind of high-headed. So I'm not going to crank his head down or anything. I don't have much contact on him right now. So where he's carrying it is fine. Sometimes when they're learning, they go behind the bit, and, and someone will say something on the videos like, isn't he behind the bit? Sure he is. That happens. They're learning. It's not perfect yet, okay? It's all a process. So understand the process, and you'll understand why some of them are behind the bit, or if they were really pulling on me, I really want them to give. But in the end, I don't want to hurt their neck. I don't want to put too much pressure on their mouth. So I want them to carry where they comfortably can and what their confirmation allows them to do. So right now, 
my hands are very light. So that was our three circles. And again, compared to Friday, I got a different horse. He's bending much better, and he's holding his speed pretty well. So all I'm doing is keep this walk. That scared me, not him. <laughs> Just pretty. Is um, squeeze him with my legs lightly, and then half off if he gets too fast. So now we're going to go into our leg yield. Okay? So hands to the right, and very good. So I'm pushing him off my left leg back towards the fence. So it's a lateral movement, and we're pushing him sideways, and all lateral movements will help PC horses. Now, I said he was trotty, so will it help his gait? No. But I want him to learn how to do it, because if a bike is coming or um, i got to push him next to the car to grab my coffee off of the top of it or get to the fence, all these things are going to help. The better broke they are, the more you can manipulate their legs. And if you can have control of a horse's shoulders and hindquarters, well, it makes them so much safer because then when something happens, the footing gives out or they're acting up, you, you have better control of them. But if your horse doesn't have a good woe, it doesn't move sideways when you ask, it doesn't respond to the reins, it doesn't bend, you really got nothing to help you when a bad situation happens. So right leg off, hands pull a little bit towards the fence, and my left leg was going on and off. So we're trying to get the horse to walk forward and sideways at the same time and do it with their body kind of straight, okay? So he did that very well. We got one left over here. And he's doing a great job. So either he had no idea what I was doing the other day, because that's what he acted like, or maybe somebody did teach him some of this stuff, and he just forgot. And then he thought about it over the weekend, like, well, what do I do to make my life easier with Gay? Oh, I think she wanted me to do what that other person taught me. So maybe he did know. You just never know. So sometimes my opinions change on the horses as we go because I'm like, he's either super smart or somebody taught him before. All right, so now the stop and the back up. So legs off, sit back. Whoa. So quite good, except his head came up and he kind of dribbled forward. So I'm holding until he puts his head down. We got a tarp blowing in front of us, so I release when his head went down. Now I'm going to pull and add just a little leg to go backwards. So he immediately kind of went crooked. And remember, that champagne horse did the same thing. Is a, lot, a lot of people back their horses up. So do they back up? Well, no. And do they back up straight? No. So that's just a normal thing. So he stared at the tarp, but not a spooky horse, right? That's pretty scary. He's like, oh, who cares? So nice horse. Okay, good mind. That's the most important. Sure, the color adds to it, and he's pretty. But the, it's most important to have a good mind and something that's willing and teachable, okay? Smart is good, but smart can be bad for some people because the horses outsmart them and they don't realize it. Okay, so stop again, leg off, sit back. Whoa. So dribble forward, so just close my fist there. Head down, release, back up. So pull a little leg. He's pulling and not giving. So once he got a better step, that's when I released. Now he's stuck. More leg. If they really get stuck, I turn their hindquarter, and that usually unlocks them so they'll go. So this is all normal. At least he's backing up. Some don't even know how to back up. Now I want his head down and then release. So they just go, I don't have to back up that much. And I go, oh, you know what, with me you do. You're going to have to back up 5, 10, 20. 30 steps sometimes. So whatever I'm asking you need to do. The backup is super important for the trail because trails are blocked and sometimes you can't get out. You do have to go backwards and you have to go backwards a ways. So you want to practice that. Now, don't practice five steps. Do 10, do 20. Make sure that horse can really go backwards. So this is our third backup. So back up. He's like, I don't want to do it anymore. Now I'm really crooked. So left rein and left leg to straighten him. It's good to learn to steer backwards. And again, I don't mind that his head's up and that he's pulling because this is new to him, but I do want to make sure when I stop that he puts his head back down. Now our turn on the forehand. Remember, forehand, turn towards the fence. It's going to be our right rein and leg right now. 
He's thrown his head, but this is a normal thing. He doesn't understand. Now we're going to ask for the head down. So I don't want to get it all at the same time. Good job. Good job. Lots of reward. Good boy. You did such a good job. Okay. Lots of horses never get anybody saying anything good to them. They just ask, 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 and never give. And then some people give way too much and don't ask anything of them. So you need a little bit of both to make a good horse. You got to ask them to do some stuff, and they got to do some stuff. And then when they do it right and they try, you make a big fuss. You know, that, that was a great job. But don't reward them for not doing anything, okay? And don't constantly be on them and not tell them they never did a good job. That's why some horses don't want to do anything for you. I work these horses pretty hard, and they all want to come out and work. They all line up at their stalls when I show up. Because I'm tough, but I'm fair, and they respect me. And I do reward them. Okay. All right. So now we had changed our direction. We repeat, re, we repeat the arena routine this way. Okay. So we're doing our flat walk. I'm kind of pressing lightly with one leg and then the other. I'm trying to keep this head down just a little bit. So the horses that are trotty need to usually invert themselves to do that saddle gait. When they invert themselves, that means that they're raising their head up and they're kind of hollowing their back out, like overarching their back like that. Okay? Now, in the long run, that's not the best for the horse's back and it's not the best for the horse's neck. It can cause them arthritis, pain, lots of other issues. So, what do you do? Well, you try, if you can, first to get their gait, get it good, and then over time, see if they can do it in a more neutral body position. If they can, that's great, but that takes time. Okay? Now, some can't. Some, as soon as you bring their head down, they're way too trotty, and they just can't hold that gait, or you're not conditioning them enough to hold that gait. Okay? Can you still gait? Of course you can. Is it still bad for them? Of course it is. <laughs> but you do other things to help counteract that. So they trot. That's good for them. So. Make sure every day you go to ride them, you let them be loose first and let them trot around and use those muscles they use for the trot because that will help counteract some of that. Okay? When you walk then and you're going slow, we're going to start a leg yield now. So hands to the left, right leg on, left leg off. This way he's not doing it as well, but oh, look, surprise, he got over there. Okay, so you want to put them over poles, you want to teach them to walk with their head down, do a flat walk with their head down, so that way they are using different muscles and you're kind of helping with their um, with their back and their neck, okay? Nothing's perfect. Everything we do to horses and animals and the world, of course, we cause damage because that's what humans do. So. But we're trying to make it comfortable for them, use their muscles. And the horses will go around and invert themselves on their own and do that gait. Okay? So we're doing what they kind of naturally do, but since we're on their back, we're trying to make them as strong as we can doing it. Okay? So this is our second one over in this direction. So hands to the left, right leg on, left leg off. Stare where you're going, so straight ahead, pushing on and off with my right leg. Now, hopefully I'm not talking to myself because sometimes the camera shuts off or the, uh, I can't sometimes tell if it's following or the microphone shuts off. All right, this is our last leg yield. So again, let, these are lateral movements. Help with PC horses, but helps to get your horse more broke. Okay. So very good. So now we're going to do our stop and backups in this direction. I do it both directions. So leg off, sit back, breathe. Whoa. Now, he thought about stopping, but it never happened. So he kind of dribbled forward. So I got his head down. Now I'm going to back up. So pull, little leg. Release when he's not pulling. Again, I don't care if his head's up or down as we do this. But I'm not going to release when he's pulling because then you're just teaching your horse to pull. So I'm still backing up because I don't think it's good enough. And now he's like, you know what, lady, I had enough. Oh, look, I put my head down. And I said, oh, good job. Good job. All right. Now we go back to our flat walk. 
So practice your stop and backups. Nobody ever practices them enough. If you want a good stop, you got to practice the stop. You got to practice it in the arena. You got to practice it around the barn. You got to practice it around the trail. You got to get your friends to stand there and wait for you while you stop because it makes it easier in the beginning. Here we go. Leg off. Whoa. So there I still had to close my fingers to get them to stop. Now I'm going to pull and release. I don't expect that the horse is trained in one day. It takes many weeks and many months. But I expect in the way he's so smart that he'll probably have this down in a week. And then it looks like magic when I stop them. So I just held until he dropped his head down. He has to figure that out. I'm not pulling it down. I'm not making him do it. I'm just holding pressure. And then he looks for answers. And what they do is they look up. Like, will she let go if I put my head off? Nope, oh, nope, that's not working. Will she let go if I throw my head? Nope, that's not working. Will she let go if I turn my head to the side? No, that's not working. Will she let go if I put my head down? Oh my gosh, she let go. That's the answer. But you got to do it over and over again because they forget. So next time I stop, it might happen again. So here we go. Whoa. Now, he almost had it that time. He just dribbled. And he was getting slower and slower, and then he didn't get the answer. So that's okay. I know he's going to get it in time. So I'm backing up. So pressure, leg, wait till he's not pulling. Oh, and he put his head down again. Good job. Okay. So now let's do our turn on the forehand. So turn towards the fence. Now he threw his head up. That's okay. Now see so it go a little sideways. There we go. Now I'm going to push him over. So he doesn't know. Now, sometimes it's something pulling on them or something like pushing on their trigeminal nerve on their face, like the bridle, they have some sensitivity, or the dentist pushed on them and it's bothered them ever since. Sometimes it's something like that. We don't know. And other times it's just they did something with their head and somebody released, and so they thought that was the answer. Okay? So it can be any of those things. So when you're looking at things, you're trying to figure out something wrong with this horse or not, you just got to try training them so they get better or they get worse. And you know, if it stays the same or it's getting worse, something's probably wrong. If it gets better, they're probably okay. It was probably a training thing or something pushing on them. All right. So now we're going to go faster and we're going to go into a saddle gate. So we're going to try and do it with a more neutral head carriage. But I'm going to show you how they probably rode them first. So they usually sit back, bring their head up, and go forward. A lot of times they cluck, and it kind of drives the horse into it. As you see me going, I got a little bounce in the saddle, so that means I'm probably doing a little bit of step pace here. But I just want to show you what it looks like. Okay, so it's okay, but it's a little bouncy, and it could be so much smoother. Now, as we bring his head down, it's hard. We're in difficult footing, and all those things can make him trotty. So when I bring the head down. It can make them trotty, and I'm in deep footing, so I have to see just what can I do. So I'm going to apply a little pressure. There we go. And as soon as he puts his head down, I'm going to release a little bit. So I'm going to do it each time. But again, he's trudging through this footing as I'm trying to do this. Now I just pushed him sideways. He's like, hey, this is not fun. So going through this footing, he's trying, but we're sinking. We're doing all sorts of stuff. So all I'm doing is holding pressure like I did at the standstill. And every time he lowers his head, I just release a little bit. Now just doing that has smoothed him out some. It hasn't fixed it all, but it's a little better. Okay. So what else can I do? Well, you got to think. Are they trotty or are they pacey? Because the answer is a little bit different. But what it feels like to me, and if they're step pacing, that means they're getting a little pacey. So we're going to try and go a little leg yield as we go down towards the camera and see if that smooths them out. But it's really hard doing the saddle gate in here right now. Now that's a little better. Okay. Oh. Get their hand down. Now, 
sometimes when they trip and do stuff like that, something's wrong with them. So we got to see is something wrong or not. Well, the footing's really bad. He's kind of screwing around. And this is hard, right? He's probably out of shape. So all those things you have to consider just like us. I could trip and fall at any point. So I'm going to give him a break. And then we'll try a little bit again. Because usually I give a break in between the flat walk and the next walk. But because I'm videotaping, I did it. So we'll give a little bit and we'll try it again. But I went from very deep footing to very hard footing with not, you know, not deep. And so that changes. And the horse has to be aware of those things. Um, if they keep jamming their toes into the ground because they drag their feet or they're starting to get lazy, again, they're showing things we can do to try to help them get their toes out of the way. But if all the arena was perfect and they're tripping, that makes me more worried. When it's like this, it's up and down, we haven't dragged it, it's muddy, there's holes, all this stuff. They're tripping. I'm not so worried about it because it's usually the footing. Because I walk through here and I know how bad it is. All right, so let's try it again. So we shorten up, we don't go anywhere. We do not want them to think shortening the reins means go. So when we shorten up, we just stand here. Now he's turning and doing all sorts of stuff. That's okay. I have pressure on both reins, and that's what I wanted. I wanted his head down. Okay. So we're going to go forward. We got our flat walk. So I just try to go through the flat walk first. Now I'm going to add a little, just a little bit of speed, because this is kind of hard. Now, if you're like, what's the difference between a running walk or a fox trot and a saddle gate? The saddle gate, they don't shake their head so much. So if you see me going and there's head shaking, that means I'm either doing a running walk or a fox trot, which I am at times because of the speed and the footing. Okay. Now, right now he's okay, but we're going to turn on to the hard footing. So we're going to sit back. I'm sure he's opening his mouth and playing with the bit because he's trying to figure out how I get this pressure out of my mouth. The only way is just to put his head down. He's got to learn that. So here he's doing pretty good in the deeper footing. Now I'm holding because he's speeding up and I'm going to push him a little sideways again. Okay. Well, good. At least he stopped. So we're going to do another turn on the floor here and go the other way. So what I'm pulling on him because he's trying to to throw his head up and I'm trying to hold. So now we're going to go this way. So what I'm deciding is as I'm going through this footing, it's not very good to do the skate, but I want to do it both ways because we already started the other way. But if I wanted to practice the skate more, I'd go out around the barn because it's not mushy out there and the footing's much better. Okay. So we're just going to see how we do. Okay. Now if I'm bouncing and his head isn't going up and down, then I'm not doing a box trot. So that's one way to tell you're doing a step pace is their head isn't going up and down. So is this a good gate? No, not really. But it's what we got at the moment. So we're going to try and fix it. Now he's pulling. So again, some things are better to say some are. There he can it a little bit. A little crooked. Well, so right before he tripped, it did pretty good. So we'll see. Hmm? It's like, this is hard. The footing's all over. I don't know where my feet are. What am I doing? And this is why it's good to test horses, too, in different footings. So you see what they know, how they do. And again, the arenas are much different than the trail. So they can not be trippy at all on the trail. And they trip all over in here because, again, they're not used to it. So we're going to start off again. And the more tired they get, the more trippy they can get. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more speed. Not bad. Now a little bouncy. Now he's pulling. And he's moving his hind quarter to the side. So I'm trying to straighten all those things. There, it's pretty good. I want to go around again because I went around a couple times the other way. 
Okay, now the footing's changed, so he's changing what he's doing. So sometimes it feels like they're moving all over under you, right? You're like, what was that gate? What was that gate? What? Yeah, that was nice. Where'd it go? That's what happens, because the footing and all of that is changing what they're doing. So until they get it down and can hold it, those things are going to happen, but you have to learn how to help them. And right now, I'm having to hold him together, because he's having a little issues going through that deep footing. Now right there. Oh. Put his head down, he didn't trip, and he was pretty good. Good boy. So that was pretty good. So I'm going to drop the rein, and hopefully he won't walk away on us. Now, we'll, do, we'll try a little side pass with him, and I'll do it in front of the pole, and we'll see how he does. I try to get their side pass done before I teach them to sidle up, because if you do them too close together, and then you need a stick for your side pass, they can get confused. And then instead of moving away from the stick, they keep coming towards the stick. You did pretty good. I think it was pretty good. Yeah, not great, but good. Okay, so let's do our side pass. Now, again, uh, if this horse stays a little trippy, you know, sometimes it's their foot's unbalanced. There's a lot of things that go into it. Um, it can be the saddles pinching him, so I'm just side passing, and I'm going to wait for his head to go down, so he is doing a little bit, um, but then I might roll his toe and try to get his toes out of the way a little bit more, and then see if that helps him or not helps him, but when they're out of condition and stuff, I don't worry about it, um, especially if they got kind of some, nope, now we're going the other way, and he's like, what? So this won't look pretty at all. I can probably turn towards you. Um, but this is how it starts in the beginning, so you might as well see what bad looks like. So bad side pass, throwing his head. Try, there you go. And then I just released when he went down, so he knew that was the right answer. Now, so sometimes it's just too hard for them, and people think, well, that's mean. You know, you're pulling on him. I'm like, no, I'm trying to help him figure out the answer, and I have to put pressure on him to figure out the answer, but he's not getting it yet, is he? Okay. Good boy. Now he got the answer. His head was up. Now we're just going to relax a little bit and get his head down. So sometimes it doesn't look pretty in the beginning. People think we're yanking and pushing on him. I didn't yank on him once. He did that all to himself. I just held and didn't release. All he had to do to get away from that pressure was put his head down. Now, a lot of horses aren't good off the right leg because everybody does everything to the left. And sometimes it's just they're confused. So if he's too confused, I might turn him, do my turn on the forehand, and then try to dribble into my side pass. So see how I just went a little bit sideways? And then I'm going to wait for his head down. But I've done this so many times with so many different types of horses that I can usually feel when I they feel unstable or horrible, or it's just a learning process. But you never know until you get to the end of the training and we go, yeah, he's fine now, or no, he, he's got something we got to work up, or he needs a chiropractor. There we go. Look at that. He went from horrible side pass to somewhat decent. Now, he just moved back over to the right, and I was going to get off. But now i got to move him off my right leg again because he went the wrong way. Whoa, good boy. So I'd rather have his butt go to the left, not to the right when I'm done with this. Good job. Okay. So I try to be very clear that they understand what we're doing. Because if I stopped and he went off to the right that time, well, then next time I did it, he might have thought, well, I thought the answer was go left, but now I think the answer is go right. So overall, for not being out, being a younger horse, I think he overall did really, really well. And I just like trying to share this stuff so you can learn from it too and just understand that, you know, you might see my videos where the horses look great, but they don't start there. They all start usually in the same place. I'm wiggling to get them out of my space. And then they get better over time. So you'll be able to watch his progress 
Um, they're both really pretty horses, so hopefully you'll enjoy seeing their gates and where they go from here. Hope that helps.